Hello, my friends from all over the world. Today we have a special guest, an international Ukrainian guest, Oksana Divoy. She has been an old friend, and this is another show from out of hemp engineering, which, which I'm sharing with all the love and pleasure of this world. Welcome, Oksana. Thank you, Ramon. Oksana, yep. I am full of questions and, um, and we have been talking to each other on the ground and through Messenger and WhatsApp. And, but I wanted to take advantage of this opportunity to have an interview with you and, and talk about everything that is happening um, to you as a human being that you run away from Ukraine against your own will for all this happening and secondly, because you are a hamster, um, very famous one in our, in our business. And I guess you got a lot of things to talk about what is going on. Thank you for the compliments of being famous uh, in the world famous in Ukraine, as we say. Uh, right, let's talk about it. So Doxana, we have done many events together, but I never actually had the opportunity to ask you, how did you end up in the hemp business? Tell us about yourself. What did you do before all this? Uh, thanks. Well, I did various businesses, uh, including mining and real estate and uh, even uh, retail as a land acquisition. But um, in hemp business, I ended up because I was always feeling uh, that like from the childhood, I was always interested in uh, non-traditional medicine and um, some natural things. Uh, so um, I guess that was like a, a bit of a solution, but the, um, the reason why uh, was that my family, uh, my brother-in-law acquired a hemp uh, field and uh, bought an old uh, hemp decorticator in Ukraine. It was ages ago, like at least 20 years ago now. And he was the first in uh, Ukraine, I believe also first in maybe Europe who had done that. So uh, I've joined him and uh, then created my own brand. And then that's what you see. And a lot of people are happy in enjoying your textile products around the world. And and yes, you've been very famous to tell you the truth, Oksana. Well, very, yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you, it's quite a small niche business, yeah. Yes, um, nonetheless, um, it is almost impossible to not to talk about how the war affects you as a person and it, the business itself, right? Uh, yeah, we have been affected, of course. It's a whole uh, tragedy, a huge tragedy of the whole world. And uh, we um, had to run from the country, me and my family. Uh, we came to Netherlands because uh, my two of my children have uh, Dutch passports and uh, my partner is half Dutch. Uh, so that's why we are based in Netherlands. Uh, and I'm moving my uh, part of my warehouse here. But we have started uh, working almost uh, a few weeks after the war started. We started uh, delivering and we started working because uh, my uh, understanding of the life is that everything has to move on and uh, the team has to work. They have to have a good spirit. They have to be active. They have to receive money and uh, so on. So we started working. Our production is partially uh, active because we still have a large warehouse and we can uh, deliver. So, uh, yeah. And surrounded by kids, which is the most important yes. thing. Yeah, of course, surrounded by kids and it's a bit dif different from uh, my life in Ukraine. I have to uh, take care of uh, my kids and even more kids that I've picked up from Ukraine, but that's the way it is so far. Uh, even, uh, that's even a, interesting challenge so my team has more things to do without me well uh, Sana, with that pa passion that you have always carry on your shoulders and the common objective that share our mission i don't think that you will be 
fully as affected um, on regards to the war because with your spirit, you are anywhere on earth an asset, an asset that will bring together the people that will shine your spirit and your beautiful soul that uh, irradiates to everyone around you. Thank you very much. But it's actually, uh, we got so much support, uh, like not only worldwide and as a people, but as, for example, as my company, a uh, few of my clients, uh, first thing they said, uh, I mean, they had paid me a prepayment and I was supposed to deliver and everything, the war started. They did not even ask for their uh, goods. They said, uh, how can we help? And they offered me to keep that prepayment even it was it happened with few clients uh, of course we uh, delivered already and we are delivering but uh, I have to tell you these are exceptional people one client uh, asked me to help her adopt some children from Ukraine and help her like bring some children so uh, hemp people are uh, I mean these are my dealers the clients they um, uh, sell uh, hemp products and I tell you hemp people are uh, united and uh, in a good spirit as well. And I should not stop offering also my personal help and professional help, help on that regards because I guess I was on the top of you long before this happened. I was telling you, Oksana, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. <laughs> oh my. Look, uh, we are all uh, facing challenges of all type. Um, one thing that uh, life has taught me at my 60 years old is that sometimes you don't take the actions to get out of the comfort zone and the universe, the universe forces you to take the actions. One way or another, this might be uh, hard in this moment, but I'm very sure that you will catch up and you will be a light for a lot of people the way you were before and you're trying to be in this moment. Thank you. So how is that, uh, Oksana? What would you tell, what message you would send to the decision makers in, in the hemp business and in the political scenario? So in that regard, Oksana, what message would you send to the decision makers on regards to the yeah. hemp industry and the political scenario that is happening at this moment? Right. Well, uh, I'm not really believing in these big uh, politicians and everything. I'm believing more in uh, people themselves who make decisions. And actually, I think that's us who are making decisions at the moment. And we should start with ourselves, with small things, small actions, and we should just keep doing what we do and uh, then think about what else we can do. And that's at this moment with this war, I noticed that a lot of people started doing that, uh, started like like on each level, like in Netherlands, they offer their own apartments, their own houses. Nobody sees that, nobody thanks them on governmental level, they just do it. The same in Ukraine, people are offering their, uh, everything also uh, the, the accommodations uh, money uh, food um, help to get people out of the war zones uh, especially help with kids so um, I think it's already happening and people are changing and this is the most important that we change on our level and then the politicians are just you know there and they should be following what we are doing so um uh, like a colleague of mine, an IT guy who was abroad at the moment when the war started, he returned back and he is now uh, helping me with my business. And then as well as he wants to uh, plant a lot of help, hemp because he thinks that hemp as a food will help us uh, as Ukraine and also as Europe to survive because um, as you know, the agricultural problem is huge. They, uh, well, they started planting wheat, but um, that the fear is that might be not enough mm -hmm. bread in the world because of this uh, war problem. Uh, so that coming back to your question, I think that um, most important that we start 
changing uh, things on our level and start bit by bit. Um, like I'm, what I'm doing, I'm, I'm continuing my business. I'm selling my stuff. I'm selling more abroad because, of course, the purchasing ability in Ukraine is uh, became a bit less. Uh, so I'm trying to sell my things abroad and market it more abroad, and then money will come to Ukraine to production, to salaries, to people, and people will be, you know, more cheerful and, um, yeah, just happy that they can do something and they are, uh, you know, actually doing it. Um, at the moment, uh, Australia and New Zealand are countries that are facing the winter. So actually, uh, funny enough, our first order came from uh, Australia, from a woman, uh, she's native Ukrainian, but she said, I want to support you and now buy this fur coat that I've been following for so many like uh, months or years. She said, uh, that's the perfect time, war and, uh, you know, uh, I love those people who, you know, it's a risk that it might be not delivered and it's a 500 euro code and uh, people just do it and um, it's amazing. Mm. Well, I listened to you, Oksana, and I cannot deny that my heart is jumping. Your message is so powerful on, by all means and an example and a motivation that I'm that I is 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 reaching me. Um, I am very grateful for this uh, few minutes that your busy calendar allow us to do. And um, thank you, thank you, Octana. Um, thank you, Ramon. Thank you very much. Thank you.